Hey, good afternoon and welcome to Cook for Fun TV. Today is Sunday, August 27, 2017, and the time is approximately 3.15 p.m. in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. And we're broadcasting to you live from the greater Toronto area of Ontario, Canada. And today's menu is quite special. I celebrated my sweet, uh, I wish I could say 16th birthday yesterday. And we're having a family dinner. And a couple of the menu items include lobster and also water morning glory. And I'm excited about today's menu because it's not often that you get to see a lobster cooked on a uh, Twitch uh, stream, so we're very excited. And I am going to get a little bit of help in the preparation of the lobster. This is a seafood that my family grew up eating, but I wouldn't say I necessarily prepared this. <laughs> alone myself and so <laughs> uh, father cook for fun will be um, uh, will be assisting us on today's show while sort of stay anonymous <laughs> but um, you will get to see the uh, technique for preparing the the parts of the a lobster and and um, get to, you'll also get to see his um, knifing skills. Okay, and I'm just going to turn off the webcam as we don't have act any activity going there on right now. Okay, so for this, uh, these two dishes actually, we will have some seasoning to go with it. Um, so, if you are familiar with having lobster cooked the uh, Western style, it is typically boiled and the, um, I guess the person eating it would um, on their own remove the separate pieces of the lobster and um, dip it in butter and eat it. It's a very, it's usually just enjoyed um, the way it is, quite um, um, according to its natural flavor, because it's already very, very tasty. The way that we're cooking it um, also maintains the original flavor. Difference is, instead of dipping it in butter, we dip it in this uh, very popular Chinese a scallion ginger sauce. So it'll have the grease of butter, it'll be oil, but it'll be infused with some garlic, ginger, and green onion. So think of a flavored butter instead of um, pure butter. We'll also add a bit of white pepper and some um, chicken powder broth. Uh, a lot of people simply add salt, so this tends to be a very, I, I've been using this lately, it's, um, it's Norris Chicken Broth Mix. It's also known as um, like chicken bouillon, <laughs> I guess it's in French, melange pour bouillon, <laughs> I guess that's the word for stock or broth bouillon. So this also comes in cubes, but this is powder form. It's not mandatory. It does give you that. It does enhance the flavor. If you ever have potato chips or or meat jerky, you sort of taste that like that uh, flavor. That's really salty. Makes you thirsty. You want to have more. It it uh, it uh, somehow makes you addicted. It's also that flavor you get from monosodium glutamate, known as MSG. So this is what gives it that boost, but we don't use a lot of it. It's just there, so it's totally optional. And I also like to add a hint of sesame oil. Yeah. It gives it a nice aroma to it. Okay. And if you want to see 
a um, recipe that we are following, you can hit enter exclamation mark recipe. I'll just do that now. So it comes up and I have it. Okay. Recipe and I have a link to a YouTube video. There are many, but there you go. There's a, a video. I thought um, this one is quite easy. In, the, in that uh, YouTube video, the, I guess the caster mixes all the seasoning with a, a lobster prior to steaming it. Ours is the other way around. We are going to steam it and maintain that seasoning as a dipping sauce. Yeah, there are other recipes say to um, the, a deep fry it first to seal the flavor before steaming it. We want to avoid the oil and we're just going to go with steaming. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see my father cut the um, lobster into uh, the parts the proper way. Yeah. Hello there, NT Seth. How are you? How's it going? <laughs> Sesame oil is really yummy. Mm -hmm. It's got that nutty aroma to it and it um, you can use it in making your tahini sauce, which is a very popular Middle Eastern um, tahini sauce. Yeah, a sauce used to make, um, used uh, to top uh, um, all kinds of um, dishes, and it's a major ingredient in hummus. Um, rather than using olive oil, you can use sesame oil because um, a lot of their flavors there are sesame oil, just enhance it even more. Okay. So in a way, I'm going to take up time until our guest arrives and I'm going to start by mincing some garlic. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to hand mince it. I could use a press, but I kind of look like to keep it less cluttery here. So I'll just use my handy cleaver. And how's it going, um, NT Seth? My, my schedule has been a little bit um, inconsistent. Um, lately and the reason is that we've had a good summer and for three weekends in a row i went canoeing it was just something i discovered i liked a couple weeks ago a couple weeks ago we uh my husband and i joined some friends for a getaway to a cottage uh, not very far at all one and a half hours from um, Toronto from us and we spent the weekend there and there wasn't too much going on there <laughs> to be honest and uh, I think the highlight, the highlight of the trip was canoeing and I had canoed um, before as a tween <laughs> when I was 12 and um, I hadn't canoed since and I had forgotten how enjoyable it was. I think at the time I probably didn't think it was enjoyable. It was just sort of, oh, yeah, it was probably a lot of hard work when I was younger to, to like paddle, but I, I really enjoyed it when I went to weekends ago. And then the weekend after, I found out that Toronto was having this event to celebrate its 150th birthday. It's called Momento by canoe, momento, so moment as in moment, and then the toe as in T-O, as in Toronto, Ontario, momento, uh, moments of Toronto, I guess, <laughs> by canoe. And the event sort of focused on, um, I guess, a, a, a very, a truly Canadian activity because the canoe uh, was supposed to be invented by the Ojibwe tribe that is um, local to the Ontario area of Canada. And the original canoes were made of birch wood and there was an abundance of birch wood back in the day. And, and uh, canoes uh, today and all over the world are modeled after the original canoes. Um, I guess the shape of it, I guess now they're made, they're lighter, they're made of all, all different kinds of materials, but uh, the shape of it is still the original shape. And 
yeah, it was sort of, <laughs> yeah, a way, a way for us to be in touch with our Canadian heritage. So the government was offering free canoe rides. The, the site that we went to is a pretty nice park. Um, I hadn't heard about it and I only knew about it because of this, this event. So it's also advertising, I guess, for promoting uh, going to, to the park. And um, the, the canoes were, were brought over, 80 canoes were brought over for this event. So you can't rent it on a regular day. And so it was special, so I, um, I just had to go canoeing. And so we shifted last week's stream to um, Saturday afternoon so that we can do the canoeing Sunday morning. And then I, uh, um, I, I celebrated my birthday yesterday and we went canoeing. <laughs> I looked up a marina that was only 45 minutes from our home never heard about it before it's just one of those things when you're living somewhere you don't really appreciate <laughs> as much you have to be a traveler to actually research uh the place that you're going to so i hadn't known that there was canoeing nearby so went there and uh, our our lobster meal was planned for today and thought it'd be it'd be fun to definitely feature lobster on the stream and that'd be a dinner thing. So a little bit of a uh, shift in our schedule, but we hope to be back on track uh, starting next week and it'll be that at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time um, Sundays. So um, um, so thank you so much for, for joining today, um, notwithstanding our irregularity in schedule. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, um, and he said they're used to using olive oil for frying cooking. So this is a flavoring oil, sesame oil. I'm, I wouldn't say that you use it for cooking. You could, it would just, it would make your food taste really good. It's a pricier oil. It's, um, this is around, I think this is maybe six, approximately six Canadian dollars where I've got my you know, I've got my large jug of canola oil for about half that price, maybe just like three ninety nine. dollars So um, it's, it's used more as a flavoring oil, but um, yeah, it's, uh, you, can, you can cook with it. Um, or what you do is you cook with your, um, your regular oils, your olive oil, your vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil, and you sort of add maybe a teaspoon just to enhance the flavor. You don't need too much. It's quite pungent. Yeah. Okay, and hello there, Gunsmith Cat. How's it going? I noticed you had been live over the weekend a number of times, and I tried to catch you um, this morning, but I logged on a little bit too long after you actually went live, so I missed you, but I'm glad that um, you're able to join, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we can catch up on this uh, show. Greg, thank you for the wishes, Antisa. <laughs> that is a huge shock <laughs> when I see a sale. <laughs> you know where I'm running to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to press these, and that will just help get the skin off. Yeah. So gunsmith gar garlic gunsmith cat <laughs> gunsmith cat because garlic is two words away from the word cat in your first message um do you is your cleaver similar to this cleaver or is it like a different style because i know that there are curved cleavers and there's like shorter ones um yeah uh, i actually don't know a lot of people who mince garlic this way um, it's quite common in Asian cooking to do that, but I've actually never seen other people do it, so that's all. <laughs> so you piqued my interest. Yeah. I've often told people that if they don't have a cleaver, they can use the, uh, the handle of a sturdy knife. I think a lot of my handles, though, for my um, other knives back there, they're, they don't have such a solid 
base or even a wide of a base so <laughs> yeah it's half the size okay and my my parents had one that's half the size my mom's actually afraid of using the large cleaver so she bought the smaller one yeah yeah and how do you take care of it and how do you sharpen yours we do have a a little stone here but um my dad really likes sharpening knives so i would let him do it like <laughs> yeah he taught me like he said you have to soak it in water make sure the stone is wet um, and the pores of the stone has uh, absorbed all the moisture and like all these techniques too like put a towel under the stone so it doesn't it doesn't slip on you <laughs> and like you do like one side and one side like yeah he's very very um particular <laughs> about it that time <laughs> and he watched he's like backseat backseat sharpening when i'm <laughs> sharpening that i'm kind of i just sort of let him take over <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah it's all right yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh so I'm actually hand dicing it. So, yeah. So I just sort of, I, yeah. So I'll press the other few that are um, that are not as crushed, and then, yeah. I just hand dice. I think some people they go like this really fast. I don't do that. I just I use a regular chopping machine. I, I'm watching every stroke. There's no chopping too fast and accidentally running over my finger business. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so I might even get more garlic because a lot of garlic is really good and we're going to be using it for both of the dishes today. The dishes that we're cooking today don't take long to cook at all. Um, the lobster takes around 15 to 20 minutes to steam only, so yeah, yeah, so we're we're going to do all the prep first. In general, a lot of Asian cooking is uh, a lot of preparation and not very long cooking times, except for items or foods that have to be braised, slow cooked, yeah, or soups, but a lot of the cooking is fast. I guess that's why... Um, to Chinese takeout is very conducive to uh, being in the fast food category. Okay, so you use a whetstone as well. Um, yeah, I don't even know what kind of... My dad picked this up for, for us. Uh, the stone that um, we grew up use, uh, watching him use is a much bigger stone and it's, it's got... Um, I can't. It's concaved from all the times he he used it. Yeah. yeah. And he couldn't find it again, but then he found these small ones. Yeah, so he picked them up. So I'm just going to crush some more garlic, but I feel like I'm going to um, pretty much finish all the garlic. Yeah. Let's press it. But you can use a garlic press. Garlic press is very easy. Um, maybe I'll use the garlic press for the other ones Whoops, <laughs> that we mince. Yeah, just to show that you don't have to do things exactly the way I'm doing them to, to prepare the garlic. Yeah. And I wanted to comment NT Seth on the way you spelled canoeing. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen it that, sp that uh, spelling before. Yeah. Yeah, canoeing is just so peaceful. You can only canoe in calm waters. Um, if there are 
people boating, it's not as safe because you get a lot of waves and it's easy for you to uh, <laughs> capsize. Yeah, so, yep, I just sort of... <laughs> Good thing is that they're covered in peels that we will remove, so... <laughs> it's a little bit better than the three-second rule. Yeah. Yep, so... Uh, yeah, the waters are calm and you can canoe in areas where the water is shallow, say like, like waist deep. Um, and you can see right to the bottom, all the weeds, <laughs> algae. Yeah, it's just so peaceful. And you know, so far, some of the sites that I've seen, um, they've been similar. So the first time I went in a while, I mean, a very, very long time, two weeks ago, we saw, we were actually in a man-made lake. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. The lake is called Rice Lake. It was another person staying at the cottage who who told me <laughs> that the lake is man-made. So I was a little bit disappointed. I was like, oh, I thought I'm getting away from, from anything human <laughs> by going to a cottage. And um, the scenery was mainly more lake and um, nice houses because a lot of people uh, who live by the water tend to build um, luxury homes by the water. And we saw a lot of park model trailers too. We actually paddled to a township. Not, it sounds like it's far, but it was probably only a half an hour um, trip on the canoe and we were in another township. And I like waving at people <laughs> when I'm on the canoe. That's just me. I'm Mr. Cook for fun, sort of. <laughs> he's a little, he's a bit shy, but he's, he's okay. If <laughs> he's like, he's okay. He's got, he, he's okay about that. Um, but I like doing that because people are happy when they're on the water or when they're at their cottage and they wave back and they say hi. So um, yeah, I, I like that. <laughs> I like doing that. <laughs> And uh, just wanted to just wanted to say some just wanted to say hi. I'm angry, Papa Pug. I actually started at three ten. <laughs> Over the last couple of weeks, our schedule has been a little bit irregular due to my uh, need to go canoeing last week, and also we're cooking lobster and for dinner tonight. So thought that. It's better to feature that than something else for lunch because I think lobster is is uh, yeah like fun to show on on the channel yeah. and my dad will come in too he doesn't really want to be shown but I, I told him that um, his hands will be shown when he's when he's chopping up the lobster because he's quite well versed at it like yeah and um, and it, <laughs> then I could, I could do the narrating while while he's chopping, and it'll be like a tag team thing going on. <laughs> oh, thank you! Thanks for the wishes. <laughs> I have been, yeah, I have been doing the nine a.m. Yep, yep, that was my thing. <laughs> and I saw NT Seth comment. So you're not a native native English speaker, so. You got it wrong. That's all right. Yeah. My first language wasn't English, but it, it sort of became that after I started school. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I think the technique, okay, Angry Papa Pug's question about getting the meat out of the little legs. I think the, I've seen this on TV or I guess an episode of Master. I can probably get the um, non-sharp edge of this cleaver 
and squeeze it out like toothpaste. I've actually never done that. And you're gonna see that we're not a, a de-shelling the lobster. We're cutting it and and steaming it. Hello, Ganny21. Yes, we are live and welcome back to our show. And I believe it is very, very late where you are tuning in from. So thanks for um, um, joining us. Yeah, just, we're doing our, our dinner. We're doing a dinner stream. We usually we do more of a lunch stream, but we're doing dinner because of the, uh, well, because we're having lobster. Yeah, so Angry Papa Pug, are you referring to deboning it after it's cooked or before it's cooked? Yes, we're live. <laughs> yes, okay, and I promised that I would do some um, garlic cloves using a press. And I'm just grabbing that. Yeah. This is just a press we got from Ikea. Yeah, it's just, yeah. So I find that the, the way that I just minced it by hand using the cleaver by firstly pressing the clove and then hand dicing it, it's a fairly common technique in Asia. In general, there aren't a lot of different appliance types or appliance or tools in that are used. I think um, like the cleavers used, maybe smaller knives, um, um, but historically, like the fork was not uh, an Asian tool and and things like tongs, pretty much chopsticks are used as the tool to pick things up for everything and even eating, um, eating rice, no spoon, no fork, using um, chopsticks. So um, that's sort of why I, I, I learned this technique, but um, yeah, I do, I do like I do like having tools to um, support uh, cooking. <laughs> I like food processors. I like the bullet. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So I'm doing lots of garlic. I'll probably do um, a double this amount or just shy of a double portion. Mm -hmm. Okay, after it's cooked, that's how you take it up. Okay, so maybe I'll demonstrate that too because we will um, steam it. Yeah. So it's it's served um, with the shell on, but the lobster will be cut in pieces um, by my dad when it's raw. When it's when it, yeah when it's raw. I'm gonna say when it's live, but we're not we're not gonna show that they're live. They're actually they're in the fridge. Um, they're closer to the front so that they don't. Like, um, <laughs> uh, they don't get too cold, the lobsters. But I looked up online what to do with the live lobsters um, um, if there's a bit of time before you actually cook it. And it's said to wrap it in wet newspaper. So it's in a wet paper bag um, that's in a basin. And also to put it on the lowest rack of the fridge where it's not super cold. So. It, the live lobsters are in the fridge. We'll take them out. We have three of them. They're small. They're probably a pound or just shy of a pound. We we wanted to get three pound ones, but they yeah they weren't available, so we got uh, three small lobsters. Oh, lobster mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So, how how do I eat lobster legs? I I put them, I put them in my mouth and so imagine this is a lobster <laughs> leg. I put it in my mouth and I use my teeth and I bite, 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 bite so that I'm sort of squeezing the meat out like toothpaste so that the lobster leg paste comes into my mouth and I yum, I eat it. That's what I do. <laughs> That's how, yeah, but I'm going to try the rolling pin method for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that'll be kind of fun to make it easy to eat it later. That way the dirty work is done. And then when we eat it, we can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, you do mince garlic the same way. Do lobsters shrink when cook? Yes. <laughs> yes, they do. They're, um, 
they're very moist, like because they're seafood, they're very wet. And the, the liquids um, come out when the meat gets cooked. It does. Yeah. It starts to firm up. Yeah. Okay. So I'll get a couple more cloves and I'm going to just put it through the press. And I wonder if I got a message. Okay. My husband says that the lobsters may freeze. Hmm. So I wonder if I should take them out. Okay, it is. I am going to take them out, okay? They're alive with rubber bands. So, <laughs> Dad's going to be handling these. They've got rubber bands around their claws. It's a bit dark. I'm just wondering, should I just dump them into... Yeah, I see some legs moving. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to do anything dangerous because... Um... <laughs> I'll have help shortly. But don't worry, they're not going to be killed on, on camera. They're not. We have a sink in, so. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, you can't see very much. You can't see very well. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so let's put this back here and we are going to do a close up of the back and that's where my dad will be working with the lobster. Okay. All right. Um after I cut the garlic, I want to show you a couple of things we got at the farmers market. The place I went canoeing yesterday is nearing farmers market and we picked up some cured meats and that made me think of angry angry papa pug because angry papa pug um, um is a professional chef and um, does a lot of meat curing so i just wanted to i want to show that off <laughs> yeah so after i do this garlic is it a big lobster so um 25 canadian dollars that's approximately um, I guess 22 or 21 American, maybe even 20 American dollars. And they were on sale for $8.99 a pound. So, um, so $9. So it's actually less than, they're small. They're actually less than one pound each, right? So yeah, $25. So yeah. It's, Hmm. You, you never ate saltwater lobster before. Ah, okay. Um, they're good. <laughs> they're good. They're, um, is it really worth it? Well, as far as, it's just like, it's good for celebration, but it's not economical. It's definitely not. Shrimps. Shrimps are very good. Shrimps are good. I wouldn't say that lobster tastes better than shrimp. The meat is bigger, but um, I think shrimp, you get better value for it. it shrimps, I, shrimps are pretty tasty. Yeah. And Angry Papa Pug made a comment about how people only like the tail and um, they waste the, or they might not know how to eat the other parts. So my, my family eats the whole thing. Um, that you can suck on <laughs> all the different parts of the lobster to get every last bit of meat out. The, uh, the shells or the head is good for making broth. Yeah, seafood soup is very tasty. It's so flavorful. Yeah, it's, it's just sweet. Uh, it's already salty from the salt water. It's, it's really good. Um, yeah. I'm actually just crushing it, but I'm not going to hand mince it just to get the skins to come off easily. Yeah, so I have to crack it off. 
Ah, okay. You haven't had... Okay, yeah, so you're not missing out. If you've had crab before, if you've had shrimp before, uh, lobster is pretty much in that category. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I quite like crab. I find that lobster is pretty is easy to overcook, but even overcooked lobster tastes good. But it just means that the meat firms up more. The, it, 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 it tastes like you're eating more of a muscle when it's, it's uh, overcooked. Whereas crab, it tends to be more tender than lobster. So I think, I think crab is good. Am I going to make seafood soup from the shells later? I, uh, I don't know. I haven't decided. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not on today's stream. I can definitely freeze them and do something. I'll give that some soft, th soft, <laughs> some thought. Is there soft shells lobster like soft? Hmm. I want to say there is, but I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> because I, I'm thinking, um, Crayfish are like little lobsters, but then you can't eat the shell um, like you can with soft shell lobsters. So I'm not aware, but yeah, there are there are more lobsters than I, I, I than I know about. So there could be, yeah. But even small um, lobsters or crayfish, you you don't eat the shell. So I'm not sure, but I always think that shrimps are like small lobsters in a way, and. You could eat shrimp shells. I've often, I once bought uh, skewered shrimp with the shells on at some fair and I was eating it and I just kept eating it. I didn't know what I was eating. And I finished and I ate, I ate the tails like, and I, it was very tasty. It tasted like I was eating chips. Like it's very flavorful, the shell. And it was crunchy because it was barbecued and I, yeah. So, but I guess shrimp is shrimp and lobster is lobster, but I always think of shrimp as a small lobster, kind of, in a weird way. Hi, username, how's it going? <laughs> I'm well, thank you. It's been a while and I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, you're all, you're all tuning in from different time zones. We've got the US, Pacific Standard Time Zone. I think we have Central Standard Time Zone. We have the UK. I think we have, um, we have, we have Southeast Asia. I think we have Malaysia uh, or Indonesia. Um, we have France. So lots of time zones. So thank you so much for uh, being here. Oh, you're from the Netherlands, Entisa. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. I did eat shrimp whole. <laughs> Oh, angry pop up hug, you're ordering pizza. <laughs> uh, you're not making your famous pizza. I did want to make it, and then this came up. So I think I'm going to do the your pizza recipe next week. I have everything. I even have the anchovies, and these are hand dried by a, a neighbor. I put it up to the screen because there was a viewer from... Um, there was a viewer, a new viewer from Malaysia and, the, and this viewers like confirmed and verified said that those are definitely anchovies. <laughs> so yeah, but okay, let me work on these, um, garlics and then I'm going to show you the, the cured meats that I picked up from the farmer's market. Yeah, um, it was expensive. So now I'm interested in learning more about curing meat. If I can do this at home, I can save some um, cash in my wallet. It was pricey. I think it was approximately three pounds and it was a $20 piece of meat. Um, and cured meat, it's just pork. It's not like it's an expensive cut of of beef so yeah it's good to learn you're not in a cooking mood 
I hear you. If you are a professional chef, I'm pretty sure you need your time off because you're not only cooking to eat, you're cooking for other people and you're cooking all the time. Well, I guess you have, you're more into curing and making cheeses. Um, but yeah, you probably want to be out of a kitchen during your break. So there, so I mince the garlic. It's pretty easy to put it through a press, but a press is not a common kitchen tool in certain countries. So the way to mince it would just to be by hand and using your, your knife. Okay. So NT Seth is from Netherlands. Okay. That's good to know because I, I know all the viewers from Netherlands now. Yeah. I think we just have a couple. <laughs> yeah. Is that what the NT set stands for? For uh, in your username? Yeah, one of our mods is from Netherlands. Yeah, and that person is um, of Indonesian descent because in history, uh, there was a lot of trade between Indonesia and Netherlands, or there's more history than that. I think uh, Indonesia, uh, Netherlands occupied Indonesia, so um, there's definitely Dutch influence in Indonesia and vice versa. So uh, my mod um, uh, requested making a couple of um, Indonesian dishes with this fried rice and this this yellow rice that's very fragrant and good for celebration. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, that's true. You're starving. And yeah, you have to prep. With cooking, you have to prep. It's not like, I mean, you could whip things up quickly. You wouldn't have your own pizza crust then. You'd probably grab a piece of naan bread or pita bread and just make whip your pizza toppings uh, together and throw it onto the pre-made breads or the crusts. You usually make pizza for yourself. My wife isn't a big fan of any pizza. Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> pizza, I have a soft spot for pizza. I just, I just love pizza. I can eat it all the time. <laughs> my, my husband brought home some pizza for me. He, he was eating it at a meetup and, and I said, <laughs> there was leftovers, so he brought one for me. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah, <and> that's. <laughs> yeah, I'm always happy to have pizza, leftover pizza. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, NTs. Okay, cool. Seth, all right. Will do. As an Italian, I told her if she told me this before we got married, it would have made it a deal breaker. <laughs> I guess your dates didn't involve pizza. <laughs> how, how? I wonder if you can. That's really hard. It's hard to come up with, um, with like dating ideas, right? When you're, you know, <laughs> in that googly eye stage where you, that courtship stage. There's a need to come up with ideas on places to eat, places to go, and pizza is just one of those things that will make the list. Like at some point, I don't know, game night, grabbing a bite. <laughs> That's a tough one. Um, at least in North America, pizza is like a staple. People grow up eating pizza. <laughs> All the parties are pizza parties. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, speaking of growing up in North America, like um, I know we have quite an international uh, community here. So what are some foods that you grew up eating as a, a party food um, or a staple food? Yeah, like I don't want to assume the pizza so common here because I know it's not common like like elsewhere. So yeah, it's interesting. Oh, okay, so, <laughs> ah, okay, so, 
There were no complaints from, I guess, your girlfriend or fiance at the time when you picked up pizza. But she's really not into pizza. <laughs> pizza is delicious. <laughs> it's one of my favorite foods. <laughs> Even bad pizza. I like bad pizza too. <laughs> just because it's pizza, I just like pizza. I was living in Hong Kong for, for close to six years, and pizza's not a big thing there. There are pizza stores there, pizzerias there. Um, and they're different. The pizzas there are not your stand, like not the popular North American pepperoni pizza. Yeah, that's the staple pizza, or, or, um, or like a Hawaiian pizza or a meat lovers pizza. They have really fancy pizza there. The Pizza Hut um, in Hong Kong, Pizza Hut's a major chain in North America. The Hong Kong version, they have a choice of tomato pizza sauce or Thousand Island sauce. It's pretty good, but it's not heard of. It's not, it's not really something that's common here at all in North America. And the toppings, they could have like peach slices with chicken. Like it's all good, but it's just, it's different. So yeah. <laughs> so I would get pizza from the convenience store and the crust would be bread because it's not true, true pizza, but I would enjoy it because I, I just love pizza, even if it's not real pizza. Okay, hi, cake-a-cake-a-kicker. 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 There's three, there's cake-a-cake-a-kicker. Cake-a-cake-a-kicker. How's it going? And welcome to Cook for Fun TV. And let us know what country you're tuning in from. It seems like you're from Europe, so. You enjoy your pizza in Europe. <laughs> you did pizza. So there are some pizzas that are good. Pizza Express, that chain in, um, it makes decent pizza. They have, they have this Peking duck pizza. It's quite good. Rather than pizza sauce, it's, it's a hoisin sauce with your um, pieces of um, roasted duck with the crispy skin and your green onion. Um, it's pretty good, the Peking duck pizza. <laughs> Your sister was hosting a Japanese foreign exchange student and he was blown away by how much better pizza is. <laughs> pizza in the US is really good. In New York, just buying a plain pizza from any pizzeria, just a random one. Um, I keep flicking my hair because there's like a piece like in my face and it's like itching my nose. <laughs> it's, it's really, really good. Even if it has no meat on it, it's just, it's so good. Like the cheese is just like sliding off of, <laughs> it's so soft and it's stringy and it's sliding off of the, the crust. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. But then, um, if you were to go to Korea or Japan, you would be amazed at how good the Japanese and the Korean food is abroad too. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So I promised to show some... Um, so I don't know if you can see this, this thing hanging here, it's a cured meat. Okay, this is salami and I have one more. I already ate some. Yeah, it's from a shop called um, Speezy Al, if you can read that. And I that I'm just going to take a wild guess that that's pro that might be Italian for special. And it is, there's a label that says, there's a label up here. I don't know how to store it. My husband said, you don't put it in the fridge. So I just covered it with a napkin. <laughs> um, kind of to replicate a cheesecloth and it says hot. And it's, it's all like black pepper um, coating it. And, it's pork and it's good. It's really, really good. Um, how much did we eat? So I guess the top of the bag is like up here. So I'd just imagine two and a half inches extra. Um, what can I use as a reference here? My, my phone, right? My phone. This is a uh, Nexus. So I guess almost two phones worth. Okay, just a little bit more. That was 20 bucks. I thought... It's really tasty though, and you don't eat a lot at a time. But um, would love to know how you make these, Angry Papa Pog. Then 
um, yeah, I'll be really happy. <laughs> and then I could uh, also stream it too. Oh, wow. Okay, the black pepper keeps the bugs and flies from laying eggs. Okay, and it's also really tasty, but that's good to know. That's good to know that this has been protected from um, bug eggs, yeah. It's pretty spicy with all these, like this is not chili pepper, it's black pepper, but it's coarsely grounded, like really, really coarse. Almost the size of sesame seeds. That's how um, thick the pepper pieces are. So yeah, it's, it's called, the, I bought it at a farmer's market, it was $20. And then we also got this, I think it's salami. Yeah, um, this was $10, this is Canadian dollar. So that's approximately eight US and that, that other one is approximately, I would say 17 US dollars, something like that. Ooh, why is it greasy? What? <laughs> hmm. Maybe this is greasy. Something's greasy. Yeah, this is greasy. Like really, really greasy. Yeah. And and this is this has chili in it. We haven't opened it up. We tried the samples. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, I would love to see your streams. Ah, that'd be so much fun. Yeah, to recreate our own sausages. Or cured meats. Okay. Pizza top with Tomato sauce, paprika, roque. What is roque? Roque, I'll look that up. Onion, roque. Grilled chicken mozzarella is one of my faves. I already made a few times. Mm -hmm. Do you make your own crust? Do you stream? <laughs> yeah, I would love to check that out. So prosecca, so prosecca. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I have this hook up here. It was for hanging, it was for hanging the drying mat for our dishes. And then Mr. Cooper Fun said, thought it'd be fun to hang it there because <laughs> that's what people do with their sausages. They hang them. <laughs> ah, pepperoni that curls. Oh yeah, like when it curls, when you cut it so fine, it curls up. And fresh basil. I do have fresh basil. We uh, we grow it. Mm -hmm. We have Italian basil and we have Thai basil as well. Oh, okay. So pepperoni is that um, pepperoni is very common on North American pizza, but um, yeah, I guess it's not like you mentioned. You need to try that um, in the Netherlands. So interesting. Is it a Calabrese? I don't know. <laughs> It didn't come with a label, and at the time I tried so many samples, the uh, the shop owner just kept handing them to me, and I'm like, hmm, this one. <laughs> yep. So those are our uh, farmers market sausages. Okay. So father is coming in approximately ten minutes. Um, so then uh, he'll be working on. We'll have a close up of him working on the lobster, but let's. Let's prepare some uh, green onion. Okay, I'm going to cut um, about three of these. I'm just gonna finely dice them. And then I'm gonna cut some more. And these are from my parents' garden too, the, the green onion. I'm gonna cut these like lengthwise into, like julienne them, yeah, just for garnish. I also have some coriander too for garnish, okay. So we're gonna keep um, cutting. And in case you wondered what this was, this, so. Um, so in a couple of my streams, I mentioned a, a plate picker upper. It's a grabber, right? And these plates, they're Asian plates, style plates, and they actually have a bit of a crevice around the rim of the plate. So, and these uh, claws have a bit of a hook to, on each of them. And I push down. When I push down with my thumb, it's very tight. Um, yeah. So I quite like I quite like this, and it's it's great for putting it into 
the pot of uh, water for steaming. And we also have a steaming rack that it goes on top. Yeah, so I'll be showing you all of that once we cook it. Okay, so let's uh, cut away. Okay, so these were from uh, the garden, yeah. The trick is to cut your own with a really good salt cured pepperoni. The kind you get in the bag here in the States. <laughs> you have really high standards, but that's good. I would love to. Um, yeah. Yeah. You'd be so much fun to <laughs> eat with. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just going to bunch them over. Yep, <laughs> you get the good quality stuff. So do you cook? Did so? Did you cook for a lot of your dates, or you took them out? Or I guess you do both, right? It depends on you know the stage of the courtship. <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually going to. Um, I'll just cut them all up. I know, I think username is concerned for my safety. I, I do this slowly so that I'm always watching that there's no tender fingertips under the blade. Yeah. I had one of my mods was concerned when I was cutting that I was reading the chat while cutting and she, she was like, oh. <laughs> Don't read the chat when you're cutting. <laughs> so, people are really nice. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'll just put that in a plate. Well, I, I don't, um, I don't chop unless I have clearance to chop. <laughs> yeah. Like every stroke is intentional and I'm watching. It's, I'm not just chopping like I'm, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And with the weight of it, I'm controlling the speed like I'm chopping and my, and I'm watching, so my, I'm, I'm chopping only if there's clearance. Yeah. So, yeah, well, thanks for your concern. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to julienne. Uh, about the same amount, yeah. There's, uh, my family and I went to this uh, restaurant and had lobster, and um, it was piled high with julienne. Um, spring onions and they curled and had all these like swirly designs. I wonder if I can do that. I'll try. I'll try. So I'll cut them into a third. And they'll just, it's not a perfect Julian. I'll just sort of bunch them and cut them like lengthwise. And I think you have to put them in water to get them to curl, but yeah. <laughs> Angry pop up. <laughs> ah. <laughs> hmm. So there's like uh, a lot of creativity. Like, yeah. Second date you cook for them. That's nice. Hmm. <laughs> Well, people shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but I guess that's, it's inevitable when a person doesn't know you. Um, they're going to pick up on the external factors because they have nothing else to go by. So you can't see what I'm doing, but I have my fingers curled and my knuckles um, act as a barrier to cut, hold um, 
to push the knife back. Yeah. yeah. And I'm watching. Yeah. And I would never um, cut without looking. Like I wouldn't just wouldn't just be like cutting and looking at you. Like I won't do that. <laughs> Okay, when is dad coming? Should be soon. Okay. How do I get these to curl? So I got some of them curled. I wonder how they get them to curl. I wonder if putting them in water will help them curl up. <laughs> Pizza. All right, enjoy. <laughs> yeah. So some of them are, are curling, but it looks really nice when you pile the spring onion on top of your dish and it's curly. Yeah, I guess I should have looked that up before the stream. Yeah, okay. Oh, I hear my dad coming. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, yeah, and that's the mascot barking. I'm going to turn on the webcam, okay? And all right, so that's the lobster that you see. Okay. All right, I am going to shrink this webcam so that you can focus on that and sort of camera shy. So you'll see the backside and not. <laughs> The front, okay, and I'm gonna move this pot. This is our pot for steaming the lobster, but we'll put that aside. So here's the lobster, it's up close. You come in, your uh, father, you won't be, your face won't be shown. People will see your back, but people will be mostly focusing on your hands. And what I'll do is I will um, um, set you up with with the fish? lobster. Set you up with a cutting board. Okay. And I know you like a towel under your cutting board. Moistened? Yeah, that's the protector or the counter. Yeah, okay. I'll move the mic too, so you can hear us. Okay. So the lobsters are alive and um, we will firstly put them in the sink. <laughs> yeah, okay. Move that mic. <laughs> that was Winston barking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he was just greeting my father as he was coming. Okay. So, okay. Do you want to come over here and. Yeah, so the lobster. Can I pick it up? Is it safe? Okay. Yeah, so. It's safe to. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it won't so. Bite. Yeah, so the lobsters are alive, okay, but we're not going to kill them on camera. Don't worry about that. Ooh, I've never done this ever. Picked up a lot. Wow, look at that. <laughs> okay, so they're alive and kicking. The claws are bounded by rubber bands. Okay. There you go. I'll just put that down. And... We got three of them. It's actually less than um, less than a pound each because um, I count. I said it was eight ninety nine. Oh, they're missing claw. Oh, this one came with a missing claw. That's probably why um, it's less than three pounds. This is missing a claw too. So these are actually. So it was $8.99 Canadian a pound. My total worked out to 25 something. So it's less than three pounds for these three lobsters. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, before we cut it, we'll break it into the sink. Okay. We're not going to show you this part where um, they stop moving. Just, um, yeah. Okay. So put them in the bin.
And we're putting them in the sink. And I'll be back here. Okay. Okay, Dad, you can do what you need to do in the sink. Okay. Yep, go there. <laughs> yeah, so um, I know it's a little bit, you can't see much, what, much of what's going on. So I'll just switch the camera. Yeah, so he's just uh, finishing off with a little lobster. <laughs> And then we're going to return it to the close-up so that you can see the cutting technique. Hello there, painkiller. How's it going? Yeah, welcome to Cook for Fun TV. And it's the first time I've seen you in our chat, so welcome. And uh, please let us know what country you're tuning in from. We are an international community. We have uh, quite a good representation today. Netherlands, France, um, U.S and I believe Indonesia so yeah yeah and I appreciate you for tuning in as um, with uh, the countries that you're tuning in from the time zone might not be the most ideal <laughs> okay yeah okay. I'm gonna put them back and do that okay so yeah just getting it prepped and then he'll show you more detail about the cutting. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess they're not small. <laughs> the, they were advertised as one to three pounds, but they're, they actually weigh less than three pounds for three lobsters. So they're under one pound each. Um, uh, yeah. I once had a seven pound lobster and that's quite nice. Yeah, <laughs> you get more meat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is pretty um, special to have a guest on our channel. Yeah. And just let me know when you're ready and then we'll go back to the, the stove area. <laughs> yeah. So we were just previously prepping some of the seasonings. We're gonna have garlic, spring onion, lots of spring onion. Dad thought there's a lot of spring onion here. <laughs> and we're going to julienne some ginger too. Um, we'll do this while the the um, while the lobster is cooking. Okay. And I'm just gonna grab. Also for the garnish. We've got lots of cilantro. Yeah, this was great. A dollar Canadian for all this uh, cilantro, also known as coriander. So I will wash, I'll wash about this much. That's actually a lot, it's just a garnish. Okay, they wanna see you cutting too. So just to, yeah. Okay. And we have this vegetable, which in English is known as water morning glory. Yeah. I've also seen it uh, called water spinach. Okay. okay if it's, uh, um, I want them to see the cutting as long as it's, uh Okay, sorry, I had to just... <laughs> this is um, Water Morning Glory and it's very nice. The bottoms, the, bo the stems are kind of like straws. They're hollow, so they, they're crunchy. They're very good. They, 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 just imagine you're eating straws, but uh, they're actually vegetables. So uh, they have a nice crunchy texture without being too solid. Like it's not like eating carrot because the entire carrot is thick. So you get your crunch, but then you, ha you, get, you have a bit of hollow. So it's, I'm trying to think if there's anything equivalent. So it's the hollow stems that really give it the, give this vegetable character. It's quite good. 
Yeah, Water Morning Glory. Yeah, I wanted to to show this on the stream. It's I quite like this vegetable very much. And I cook it in a shrimp paste. Shrimp paste. Or garlic and uh, garlic and olive oil is nice too. Okay. Okay, so let's oh dad, I don't want you to cook I don't want you to cut it all um Okay, he's so, you, so you you basically you chop it you take off the uh, you take off the cross first okay you know and then they you know they, they struggle a little bit and uh, yeah they'll be moving so yeah. and then you, you, take you, off the you, you, yeah you cut off the tail okay and then off the head and yeah they, they have some uh, t uh, long testicle uh, te uh, um, the cl uh, arms or no, 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 they're, they're like uh, um, oh, the uh, antennas. Antenna, yeah. Okay. So you chop them up because they're they're kind of uh, uh, in the way when you cook it. Okay. So now, now most people would uh, get the tail and cut it in half like this. Okay. okay. You can go ahead. Yep. And okay. Okay. And and then you can cut it into oh here is this of the egg. Oh, those are the eggs. So they've uh, they're creamy. They're tasty. Right, right. Well, these are smaller lobster, but uh, so we usually cut this into two, uh, three sections. Okay. One and two. Okay. Right. Uh, so yeah, we can we, we do, do that. Then. Then. <laughs> and what you do after this, you add a little bit of salt and then the the cornstarch. Oh. So to keep the. Uh, you know, keep the the, uh, the lobster juice inside. Okay, we're gonna coat it with some cornstarch, and yeah. we're steaming this. Is that the same technique? Uh, you're steaming it. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, good. Because you don't want all the all the all the meat juice to you know to uh to come out to come out right. And 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 this is just for you know people. So people don't get bored of eating their the head. So they leave it there just for decoration. Decoration, <laughs> yep. Yeah. And so and same thing with the with all this. You know, you, so you you will take it out, you know. You so there's some gills to there the as gills, well. Um, you don't eat yeah. them either. You don't so, eat the gills. Yeah, you, you you just remove it, just you know. <clears throat> Do you need a different knife? Yeah, you, you, you can write, you know, but, But you don't want to waste some meat, so you just have to do a little uh, carefully. Yeah. Okay, so this part you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't use. And then okay. <coughs> yeah. So he's removing. And this yeah. is this the back? Yeah. You don't oh. So what's that? Uh, that's the the stomach. The stomach. Okay. Uh, so intestines and, and intestine. stuff. Okay. And you don't bother with that. 
So, so you cleaned off the gills. You cleaned off the gill, yeah. Is this the back of the lobster? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the back, okay, so it's the part between the head and the tail. So you're removing the gills. Yeah, yeah, you can use the line for a little bit, you know. It's moving! Why is it moving? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so... Dead man's fingers. Ah, so when they're moving, that's a term called dead man's fingers. <laughs> like, I guess when the incision was made at the back, it caused the... Legs okay. to move. So uh, I'll do the rest over there? Um, no, no. Um, let them see it. Yep. <laughs> yep, let them see it. I'll be in the front and I'm watching. Oh, the gills are called dead man's finger. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So dad's putting on an apron. <laughs> He's getting into it. It's his first time no, on no, stream. Yeah, so simply because this is a, because of the web, it's, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of this uh, lobster water come out and it will splash all over the place. Yeah. And do you use that for soup or you just throw it out? Is it just throw it out. Okay. Um, a viewer asked if we would use any of the sh uh, shells for making soup. I did mention that um, I've tried it before and it's very sweet and it's got a nice broth to it. Um, oh, I don't really think so. You know, it's not, people overemphasize on, on, on all these things. It's not, <laughs> to, you know, uh, we, don't, we don't leave it really bottled. It's the western thing that they, they like it. Oh, we throw it out. <laughs> That's okay, now you learn like um, cooking from different cultures, you can put the ideas together and is it good a camera here, or should I move over to the counter? Um, it's it's okay here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're thinking you need like a more sturdy surface. <laughs> so people are asking what to call you if they should call you um fun dad because I'm cook for fun. So if you're yeah. fun dad. Yeah, you can call him fun dad. So um, fun dad uh, plays um, soccer. That's his one of his favorite sports every Fridays with his friends. <laughs> so he is pretty fun. And he's pretty good at basketball. <laughs> yeah. So I'm watching him on 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 stream as well. <laughs> I'm uh, preparing. And we'll steam it, but once we plate it, we'll assemble it nicely. It's, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, we have a comment that you have amazing skin. <laughs> um, yeah, he, yeah. He amazing does. grace. I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah, and in the front, I'm just putting some more water, morning glory in a basin, and I'm going to soak it. I'm going to soak it in water to get it to start getting the cleaning process started for that. Yeah. And we have towels if you need because it looks like it's getting pretty um, uh, wet with all the lobster juices. Oh, so <laughs> Dad has less gray hair. Well, there are things called hair dye. <laughs> on the show, but um, I'll probably end up cooking quite a bit after the show because we have, it's, it's tasty, so yeah. Hmm, but I do have a really big pot. Okay, I'll just get more basins. Uh, 
they said you could be a hand model. <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> well, thanks for doing this, Dad. It's certainly it's a lot of fun to have you on the show, and people are enjoying watching your your skills and learning from you. Yeah. I, my father is much more uh, comfortable using the cleaver than I am. I, I don't do what he does. I just, I haven't experienced chopping up a lobster with the cleaver. Um, he's quite comfortable with the weight of the cleaver and how hard he has to chop down because with the shell, it's, it's definitely more uh, work. Uh, one, uh, one advantage of using the cleaver is when you chop a lot of uh, vegetables, and you can easily, because it's a flat, a bigger flat surface, you can easily scoop it in one and put it, put it aside. Ah. You know, when, when you chop, you know, uh, vegetables, you know, with a, a flat cleaver, you can just scoop it and then take it away easily. Yeah. So we're getting a comment that one of the viewers is a, a professional chef and mentioned something I can do with these scrap parts, like cooking um, cooking a stock and to make these, um, uh, a dish called, um, woo, <laughs> etouffee and um, Cajun and Creole dishes. So yeah, I think I can, do you think um, Angry Papa Pog I should Uh, refrigerate or freeze those parts for making the stock. Does it uh, work well in the freezer? Uh -huh. okay, uh -huh. Hi, painkiller. <laughs> well, what language are those characters in? Are they uh, look, I'm not sure. <laughs> Ah, okay. So dead man's finger are cab crab gills. Do you have any more? Plates? Oh, okay. Dad needs extra plates. Yes, we do. Yes, I actually had my mom bring over this plate. So okay. Here's an extra plate. So does he cook as good as? Uh, or does he love to cook as well? I think. It's more selective. He likes chopping. He really likes chopping. <laughs> he likes braising meats, like braising pork knuckles and uh, beef brisket. I would say I cook a lot more than him, but that's because I'm committed due to the stream. Yeah. So you just, you know, so you can scoop it all in one. That's, that's the good thing about a cafe. Yeah. We actually have an emote, an, an, an icon for the cleaver, for the channel. Okay, so we are going to freeze these um, extra parts. We're just going to freeze them and, and make, a, make a soup next time with it. Ah, so we can even save the the shells after we've eaten um, the meat off of them as well. I, I remember the last time I made stock, it was very, very flavorful. So yeah, I'm gonna look up some recipes for that. Very sweet, um, quite nice. Okay. And in the front here, I'm just, um, Soaking our water morning glory in water just to start washing them. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a comment that the cleaver will need some sharpening after all that chopping. Uh, not really. Oh, he says that it's all right. It's still sharp. I could definitely not chop that quickly. <laughs> okay, it's gotta clean up a bit. No okay. 
So that was fast. He's very, very fast. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's great. I'm going to um, get some soapy water and do a good cleaning. Yeah. All right. If you don't have anything interesting to look at here, I'll just switch the camera over. <laughs> and I made a mess here since we had the camera over there. I'm just going to soak. Clean the floor a little bit. Okay, yep, okay. I actually have a wet towel because I spilled the dog water earlier. This <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay, okay. Well, thank you, Fun Dad, for um, showing everyone how to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So he mentioned that I have to clean up, <laughs> which I'll do. <laughs> All right, so um, um, I'm going to firstly just wash the cutting board and I'll continue using it after it's washed for the uh, ginger. Yeah, I'm only gonna start the cooking once the prep is ready, because I know that time will fly so quickly. <laughs> he left, the door just closed. <laughs> And uh, Mr. Uh, Winston ca uh, came running after him. Yeah, we don't wear sh socks or shoes in the house. Yeah. Yeah. He did that so fast. I could never do it that fast. So that took him, I think that took him around 15 to 20 minutes <laughs> for it to cut up three lobsters. <laughs> okay. So I'll get some soapy water. Um, nothing I do on this stream is fast, so I'm a little bit, I can't get over that, but efficiency is good. Okay. Bit of a mess in the front. I'll just move the mic a bit. Okay, and I will cut the ginger. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have helpers. Yeah. Okay, so now for the ginger, we're going to, um, I quite like ginger in my seas, um, in my dip, so I'll probably cut um, half of this, probably like two inches, maybe even a little bit more than that. And I'm not, I don't mind the skins. Often the skins are peeled, but I, I don't mind them. and. A lot of nutrients are stored under the skins of the, f the fruits and vegetables that you eat, so I really don't mind. And I am going to um, cut it, cut them into thin slivers, so I'm not going to notice the taste of the, like any particular taste of the skin. It's just going to be part of what I eat. Okay, and I'm just going to um, cut these into thin slices. So, you might have noticed, like my dad was hacking away. <laughs> there wasn't too much consideration for ethics. It was a very, uh, uh, ethics, aesthetics, aesthetics. <laughs> It's very, um, it's home cooking. <laughs> it's not restaurant <laughs> cooking. Yeah. yeah. But when we plate, we will assemble them. <laughs> Probably put the heads together. The antennas were cut 
Otherwise, I, I would have like curled them up. <laughs> I've seen that done at a restaurant before. Yeah. Yeah, he's all about the efficiency. That was really efficient. So my parents live on the same street as me. <laughs> and I emailed dad. I said, can you come over at 4.15? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, so your dog grabbed two pieces of pizza. Pop up. He is smart. So he pushed a booster. Like he he moved a chair up so that he can hop onto it and grab the pizza. Winston doesn't do that. I I haven't seemed I haven't seen him do that. Yeah. He'll just try to jump up where he is, but he won't actually push a chair or a booster over. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> very, very smart. Okay. So we will use the heads. Um, yeah. I'm excited to do that. I'll look up some recipes. You mentioned etouffee. So I've never heard of that. So I'll look that up. Forbidden pizza is the best <laughs> And did you, what did you order on this pizza this time? Um, you did mention the anchovies, but um, did you order the, the, same, the pizza that you mentioned? Okay. I'm just cutting thin slivers. I'm surprised my dad did all the cutting with just the cleaver. I've seen him use, um, he actually has an ax that he bought and a mallet for, for cutting lobster too. And I've seen him use it where he gets the ax and then he gets the mallet and he taps the ax with the mallet. <laughs> um, but he did everything with this. I, I'm, I'm impressed. Um, like I would have been like, huh? Where do I cut? Like he just like start chop. He just knew where to cut. <laughs> yeah. And I'll show you a close up of these slivers that I'm cutting. Oh, I'm giving you a pretty boring view, so I'll turn off that webcam. There's nothing going on there, but there will be. There will be. Okay, so so I julienned the the ginger. So I did just little slivers. That's all. It's late there. Okay, in France. All right. Well, good night and thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. And you can see a photo of the the finished product on our Twitter page. Um, yeah, after the show. Um, and our stream will be archived as well. You got pepperoni. I love pepperoni pizza. Yeah, as well. It's plain. Yeah. I always ask for extra pizza sauce. I like lots of sauce on my pizza. Yeah. Don't use the tamale for the stock. What is the tamale? Is it? Um, the green guts. <laughs> Tamale. Like there's these like, I don't know if you can see, I don't want to spill out. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay, like the guts. Okay, so just stick to shell, like no, like guts for the stock, okay. <laughs> Okay, not the innards. Okay. Ah, okay. 
Um, yeah, so I'll freeze the shell and we'll make a stock out of that. Yeah. I mean, what kind of a basic soup can I make? <gasps> yeah. Yeah, and anything goes good in... I have tofu too, like tofu. Um, just plain tofu in a good stock is nice. Okay. So I've got my ginger. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think we can start um, steaming the lobster and I can actually start cooking the um, morning water glory because we have our ginger, our green onion, and our garlic prepped. The only thing we add to the seasoning is some stock, some chicken stock powder. It just helps it. And some sesame oil. I'm going to add um, canola oil too and some white pepper. Okay, so we're gonna take it back to the stove area. Okay, it's empty. Okay, Dad said the floor. Uh, there might be. No, we did a good job of keeping it clean. The towel definitely helped. Uh, okay. okay. I'll have to give this a good washing though after the stream. Oh, I should move the camera. Hi, Neonado. How's it going? Welcome back to our show. Yes stock from the shell seafood shells um produce um a really really um tasty sweet stock yeah even if you just use your shrimp shells they're so good yeah okay so i've got this pot here i'm going to add water to it and i'm going to add uh, this uh, rack and uh, a steaming rack and I have a second rack. Okay, I'll just move this so that for now. I'm going to spread them evenly so that um, so that uh, <laughs> they, none of them fall off one. I'll just use chopsticks, handy chopsticks. Okay, and since my dad had uh, was chopping them up. He also went ahead and he cracked the claws so that when we're eating it, we won't, uh, it'll be a lot easier to, to manage. So, yeah. You can chip your tooth if you try to bite through um, like a lobster or claw. The claw is pretty. Um, there's something stringy. It's coming from the, the lobster, the lobster guts, I guess. Okay, so just gonna. We're not gonna worry about aesthetics. So we're just gonna get it cooked. Okay, I guess I'll put the heads on the top. So I guess this will be the top one. And the top one could be heaping. All right. Okay, and we can put, fit this on top and fit this on top like that, and then it can go in. So I'm first going to add water to our pot. made this before. It's always been made by somebody else. <laughs> okay, put that on. I should boil it first before putting it in, but I think I'm just going to boil it because there's only an inch of water. Okay, so let's... Um, okay, I'm going to boil this on the top of your screen 
and have the um, vegetable cooking here and the seasoning cooking here. All right, so I'm gonna fire this up onto max. Okay, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put these in the fridge for now, and I'll freeze them later. Okay. And I'm going to get a uh, a small pan for the for the, the seasoning oil. I'm using this to do our dipping sauce, our lobster dipping sauce. Okay. I'll grab our um, garlic, our ginger. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to get um, and I'm going to return to the front. <laughs> so put the lobster on medium. And cut up the vegetable a little bit. And I do need to rinse it a bit because uh, it's been in water, but I just want to rinse it to make sure. Yeah, and I have a large colander. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, the water is actually pretty clean and I'll show you a close-up of this vegetable because it's not everyone has tried it before this uh, water morning glory okay. Okay. all right okay so I mentioned that the stems they look like straws, they're hollow. They're hollow. So when you, you hear that sound? So when you bite, it's got this nice texture to it. I, I would say this vegetable is all about texture. So it's like you're eating straws. They just kind of pop when you eat them and the flavors uh, get released once you bite. Uh, you get that sudden like burst of flavor. But otherwise, it's just a very neutral tasting leafy vegetable. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like spinach, but it's not as strong as spinach. I think spinach has a deeper flavor. It's just think of a spinach that is very light tasting. Um, yeah, but it's all about the texture because of these straw like stems. So I'm going to grab a few of these stems and just cut the ends because I don't want, I think, the, I think the grocery store did a good job at cleaning them before packaging them. But I'm just gonna check because we want our food to, to look good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty bulky. <laughs> I had a, a really large bag of this vegetable but everyone's gonna eat it, it's so good. So, and it's healthy to be eating lots of greens, green vegetables, okay. Yeah. So I'm just gathering some of the stalks together. I want to just make sure the ends are clean. They look pretty clean. But I just give it a nice cut. And I'll have to go over the countertop with a towel because we're we're pretty wet here with the washed vegetable. Yeah. Yeah, so they're like eating straws. <laughs> yeah. So the name, I've, the names of this vegetable I've seen are water morning glory and water spinach. I don't know where it grows. Yeah. I don't know if that means they grow in the water, or like a, 
like in the river or something. I don't know. They're not always available. Just cleaning them, but they look fairly clean. Not worry. And when I was washing them, the water pretty much ran clear. There wasn't a lot of, there pretty much wasn't any dirt coming out of the vegetable. And some, some browning, I guess. Some of the parts could be older, like some of the leaves could be older. So I'll just sort of clean it so it looks better. I'm a bit nervous. I've never made a lobster before. So. And we're working with three, just uh, under three pounds of lobster. Hi, Death Eater, how's it going? How's your weekend? And did your dogs go racing this weekend? Yeah. Yes, we, uh, so um, we had a guest. My father came on stream um, to demonstrate how he cuts lobster. So, the lobster, the way that it was, it's made in our family is that it's cut before it's cooked. And I know that in North America, it's often, it's often um, not cut at all. It's just, it, it's just boiled and you serve it whole and you break it apart um, after it's cooked. So here, it got broken apart um, before it was cooked. And it was live. So if you see this stream after we're done, um, you'll see that I was holding up each lobster and they were moving like, <laughs> they've got rubber bands around their claws. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And my dad did all the chopping because it's something I've never done before. And he's, he's, he's very uh, skilled with the cleaver. Um, yeah. And he did a good job. <laughs> Poor lobster. Yeah, so we didn't show, like we didn't show anything sensitive. A lot of, a lot of the cutting, initial cutting was done um, um, sort of off camera. I was sort of covering him, he was back there. And then after it was cut up, um, he, he put it together and he showed how, like where the incisions were made and then he did some more cutting but um yeah so yeah we uh made sure that there was no sensitive images on stream <laughs> yeah i mean i'm just gonna cut this um water spinach or water morning glory into like two centimeter pieces okay it's a lot but uh they shrink when cooked, okay, I'll just show you. So they're like, they're really like straws. You can see the hollow, um, the hollow stalks. So when you crunch, when you bite into them, they're like, they're nice. It's not like eating a carrot where the whole thing is hard. It's like parts of it is hard, but then it's hollow. And like, you can hear that, right? Like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. And it's got a really mild taste. I mean, it kind of tastes like celery, kind of, but with a different texture. Yeah, but celery is like the whole thing is hard and here it, there, it, uh, it's not. So it kind of resembles celery, but I, I prefer this over celery. Silence of the lobsters, yeah. Yep. Yep, so yeah. We kept the stream PG. <laughs> So we have our lobsters uh, steaming and I have my cabinet door open. Let's make that better. Let's close that. Okay. I've got some more oh, a water morning glory here. And it's fairly clean, so I'm not too worried. But I have some cilantro and that's really, really dirty. So I will give those a good washing after I'm done. Uh, hi, Taco Misa. Thanks so much for um, tuning in and welcome to Cook for Fun TV. It's the first time we've seen you, so uh, welcome. And uh, we're an international community. 
So I think we had uh, viewers from Netherlands, France, um, Indonesia, and um, um, the U.S. so far that I've uh, recognized in this stream. So let us know what country you're tuning in from. And that is a good description. A milder spinach. Um, yeah. A milder spinach. Yeah. And is this something that you, um, you've cooked yourself or you've just, uh, yeah, or you tried it somewhere? Yeah, so I just thought I'd uh, feature this on the stream because it's, not everybody has tried this. So. But it's, I quite like it. It's good. Yeah. You can cook it with just like some olive, like garlic butter or olive oil and some garlic, but I'm actually going to add some shrimp sauce to it. Give it a bit of that umami, like fermented, fragranty funk taste to it. <laughs> I quite like that. Just imagine like a bit of anchovy, like anchovy on your pizza, just, or anchovy in your Caesar salad um, dressing. Just some of that, that, uh, that deep earthy flavor, yeah. It sounds like the water is boiling for the lobster and that it's steaming, so yeah. Ooh, a lot, it's very, very wet here from all of that, uh, all the liquid from the spinach. I need to really soak this up. Okay. So taco misa, I take it that you're you're into taco. Um, know that uh, Death Eater is into taco. I am. It's, it's one of yeah, it's one of my comfort foods, like taco and pizza. <laughs> I, but uh, to be honest, I was thinking why about why I like taco. I like it because um, I I like top uh, the toppings on taco. I like. Uh, lots of salsa and guacamole. Like, I actually bury the taste of the meat <laughs> ingredient in taco. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna get some more water spinach. I have a lot of it, but we're just gonna stir fry it all up. Yeah. So I've actually never watched my father cut up a lobster. Like I've seen him do, I've seen parts of, I've seen him cut up some parts, but I've never actually watched him cut up. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, so the whole thing isn't shown on the stream, just um, certain parts like afterwards when it's already cut up, he's just cutting it up further. Oh, I'm not showing you this, so I'm just, I'm just cleaning up the water spinach. And I know I'm gonna have to wipe the table. It's pretty wet. Okay. I have so much of it. Okay. Get some more. I can hear people playing softball outside. It's such a nice day. I think it's just a little bit over room temperature um, where I am in. So I'm streaming from um, the greater Toronto area of Ontario, Canada. Yeah, and it's not a hot summer. It's, it's a nice temperate summer. All right, very, very wet. Okay, I'm just gonna just clean off the ends. Um, there's like some brown spots, but it's generally pretty clean. Yeah. Okay, okay.
Okay, let's see if there's any bad leaves to throw out at a spot. So for today's stream, it's mainly preparation and not too much cooking. Uh, the lobsters simply go into the plate and they're steaming away. And the vegetables just have to be stir fried. So it's all preparation. Yeah. Okay, we're almost there. We have a lot of <laughs> spinach. Get everyone to eat a lot. Yeah. So my husband has started a ketogenic diet where he limits himself to no more than 20 grams of carbs per day. And therefore he consumes quite a bit of protein and vegetable. Yeah. So last week we made a chocolate cake out of zucchini. Yeah. <laughs> Zucchini, coconut flour, almond flour. There was no like all-purpose flour. <laughs> um, basically, the carbs was replaced with like almond flour, zucchini, and coconut flour. Quite a bit of vegetable, but we're just gonna make it all. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Right. Good. Okay. okay. It's a big pile of leafy greens. Water spinach or water morning glory. Yep. Think, I don't know what my mom will cook. I think she's gonna cook something too. So we're actually having my birthday dinner tonight. Yeah, okay. And we've just got some coriander to prep and coriander is very dirty. It's always very, very dirty. I guess you can't see too well, but yeah, you can see like the speckles of the dirt. So that's gonna get soaked. Okay. I'm tidying up here. Okay. Okay. So I'm just um, taking apart, taking this, uh, taking a, uh, separating the stalks of the coriander or the cilantro so that I could shake the dirt off. And I'm actually gonna do another rinse. I used the water spinach water to clean it, but I'm going to use fresh water, to get it really clean. Do some cleaning here. Okay. Alright. Oh, okay. Thank you, Stickler. That's right. You mentioned last week that your um, your girlfriend is on an HCG diet. And you make a lot of paleo and even keto dishes. So thank you so much. Yeah, okay, I will check my um, Facebook, yeah. So yesterday, he actually made nachos without chips, so, and it's, it's a pretty decent attempt. So um, he got uh, raw cauliflower and cut it up into like little florets, just like, like chunks, just, um, uh, yeah, a little smaller florets and topped it like he would with uh, as if he were making um, nachos or baking nachos and he had uh, stir fried some ground seasoned ground beef with like the different spices he likes. 
uh, added um, gr a green pepper, um, onion, um, jalap jalapeno, um, some shredded cheese, and uh, bake that in uh, the oven. And then on the side, um, he made a guacamole, and then we had that. And um, it, it was like eating nachos, except you're biting into some crunchy cauliflower, um, which was very, very tasty. So that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So that was like a pleasant surprise. Because um, yeah. we, we, yesterday was there was a big game. So anybody who follows um, like fights, I guess, there was that popular fight between um, uh, Mayweather and McGregor, and so that was sort of like game food, nachos, but his was a, a nachos with the chips replaced with cauliflower. Okay, okay, so I think our coriander or cilantro is, I should take out my other colander. It's lots of water dripping everywhere. Okay. Okay. And this is garnish for the lobster. It's quite a bit, my dad. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> we'll just go with it. Yeah. And I, I'm going to keep them um, as uh, two inch piece, pieces. Yeah. That. Okay. Pasta made with spinach, basil, egg white powder. Interesting. Okay. Ah, we do have fresh basil. We grew it. Wow. And they were even al a bit al dente. Wow. Wow. Okay. The egg whites. Okay. One thing I noticed after uh, he started this diet is we buy quite a lot of eggs. Yeah. We go through many cartons of eggs because that's a major source of protein. Um, and it's just easy to cook with eggs. It's cook, cook eggs. When we went canoeing, um, he packed a couple of hard boiled eggs. Yeah, for the road, so yeah. Okay, cilantro and... Um, I'm gonna put the julienne um, green onion in this, just sorting them. I sort of put everything in the same bowl, but I'm doing different things. Like garnish is garnish and um, yeah, this is all garnish. <laughs> okay, and this is going in the, uh, the oil dip. Okay, so another bowl. This is plate. Okay, all right. few things that are going to happen. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think the ginger goes here. Okay, so the oil gonna make the oil dip using this but I think I need a bigger bowl so <laughs> okay one second okay okay so this is gonna so the julian ginger and the diced green onion are gonna go together. I'm going to add some chicken stock powder. You don't have to, you can use salt, but it's it's quite nice with that. And I have a half teaspoon here. So I'm gonna put around half teaspoon. 
teaspoon, a heaping half teaspoon of the chicken stock. white pepper powder. Okay. That's a bit okay. Maybe a bit less. Okay. Then, okay. The garlic. Okay. garlic well I'm going to use half of the garlic and save half of it for the spinach I haven't done this before and it shows with my uh, gestures and my hesitation but I've seen it done many times so <laughs> yeah I should have rehearsed it in my head <laughs> but putting about Good. Okay. I feel like I need more. All right. Okay. 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 We can move it over to the stove top and start cooking. Yeah. Water spinach, spinach is cooked, and the um, this, the dipping oil is cooked. The lobster should be cooked, and then we can plate. Okay, but it's all preparation. I'm thinking timing because I will be heating up oil, and I will be and I will be uh, pouring hot oil into this. So I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> all right. Okay, I actually might put some of this garlic right into the oil after it's heated. I'm gonna think about it. If I get the oil really, really hot, I can. I might be able to avoid that. Just pour it right on top. Okay, let's move it over to the other camera. All right. Okay. And I'm moving the mic as well. So this big pot is for the water spinach. This small one is for the hot oil to go on top of that. Okay. I, I do think I'm going to end up um, putting some garlic into the oil, but we'll see. Okay. And I have a couple of sauces that I'm using for the water, well, the water spinach, and those are shrimp paste, but it's sort of optional. I kind of want that deeper, earthier, fermented funk flavor. <laughs> it's quite nice. It's, it's, it's the flavor you get when you have like anchovies, quite nice. And I have fermented bean curd. It's in Chinese. It says spicy fermented bean curd. Um, and this says shrimp paste. Can't really see it because there's a lot of plastic over the label. Okay, But anchovy paste could be good or just simply garlic and butter. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I'm going to get our olive oil. So I put my olive oil in a sriracha bottle. I've shown this many times on stream because 
it's sort of it's a hack that I've seen used at restaurants and I think it's such a good idea because this bottle um, um, has a pretty nice nozzle that doesn't leak the way some olive oil um, bottles might and so every time I grab it my hands won't get greasy like it's always clean and it's easy to control the amount so if you see I'm first going to turn on the heat to like a medium I'm going to just swirl some and I can control the amount of oil like that was really really easy whereas when you're pour pouring you hear the glug 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 of the oil coming out of the oil bottle and you can overdo it really really easily so okay I have that on a medium and I'm just gonna throw in the garlic yeah my mom likes to wait for it to sizzle first but that's okay I'll put it in I can hear um, and I can see how hot it is I'm gonna turn off the lobster. It's been in there for definitely more than 20 minutes and it's just gonna keep rendering in its own heat. Okay. And I can smell it. I can smell the lobster. It smells really good. I can smell the meat. It's quite nice. Okay. Let me turn up the heat a bit. I turned it up to high now. Hi, it's Waga. How's it going? <laughs> Canada life is great. We have some pretty good weather and for the last three weekends I've gone canoeing. The weather's been temperate, um, you know, like good t-shirt weather. Nothing too hot and sweaty. Um, uh, really lovely. So I've gone canoeing for the last three weekends and that's why our streams have been at um, a different time. <laughs> I usually stream at in the mornings on Sunday but due to the in the great weather and uh, occasions, we went uh, canoeing, so had to just do a bit of rearranging with the schedule. Um, and I will turn on the fan because we're going to be working with a lot of oil. And I'm also going to grab our, our canola oil. Okay, we've got a large jug of canola oil. And I only had uh, garlic on me, it's okay. This is all fermented. This is fermented shrimp paste. Uh, I'm just going to add that. Like a, tea, a tablespoon amount. We saw some pretty nice birds. We saw a herring and a hawk. We saw turtles. We didn't see a bear, but my my uh, mother-in-law, they're in Northern Ontario. They saw, they see a bear every week in their backyard. Yeah, a black, they see black bear. It was a baby black bear that likes to, that likes to visit them. <laughs> A fermented bean curd but you don't need to it's just gives it a nice kick it's um, yeah it's salty it's got it's almost like having like anchovy it's got that nice deep fermented earthy funk I'm gonna lower that heat so we don't burn the garlic iceberg <laughs> so we didn't see an iceberg no okay I wonder if there's some, yeah, some light you can see I'm just mushing up the shrimp paste and the fermented bean paste. Uh, 
Oh, <laughs> no, nothing scratched her canoe. <laughs> and it wasn't ours, we rented it. <laughs> but we did have to put a deposit. Yep, that fits, so we'll make the vegetable in that. Yeah, I've been enjoying canoeing for the last three weekends, but I'm, I'm going to stop canoeing because I've realized the scenery isn't really that different. When you go to a different place, you see similar things. <laughs> so <laughs> I like it because it's peaceful. Yeah. Okay. Turn it back to medium. So I'm actually gonna put the put all this put all this in all this uh, water spinach. Okay, so you normally put the stalks in first because they take longer, but I have everything mixed. But in general, it doesn't take too long to cook, so I'll just put it all in. big batch but it's going to shrink to probably one-third the size or one-quarter the size it's going to shrink oops all right I'm born to be canoeing <laughs> because I'm Canadian like small chopsticks for this big pot but that's okay it's going to shrink and there's a lot of water a lot of liquid will come out as well so I'll just okay so I'll just cover it up I'll cover it up and um, every few moments or so I'll give it a turn all right now we're going to heat up some oil in here a bit nervous I'll heat it on medium so it doesn't uh, heat up too quickly and scare me. All right, and then I, I'm just going to tilt the camera a bit so you can see. Okay, get a better view. Look at that. All right, so I'm going to use quite a bit of oil. And I didn't use olive oil, I used canola oil because canola oil has a higher smoking point. I could have it heating up at a hotter temperature, which I want because I'm going to pour the hot oil into that bowl right beside it that contains garlic, ginger, and spring onion so that it will infuse those flavors naturally. And if you're newly tuned in, I also added some chicken stock powder to that and also white pepper to just flavor up that oil. Uh, granola bar oil, canola oil. <laughs> granola oil, <laughs> yeah. Canola oil, there. <laughs> I'll bring our cake stand in front while well, that's, that's happening. My dad was here earlier, so I didn't want to make it too big to the camera shy. So I have it on medium so that it doesn't get hot too quickly. I'm actually going to add more oil. I think we need... Oh, you're going to have a beer. Oh, well, thank you. Cheers. Careful. Okay. All right. I 
I hear that. I think it's oh, it's almost midnight um, in the UK. Okay, well, <laughs> I will be streaming more at uh, an earlier time. Um, my usual time is 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays, and just the last couple of weeks we've been a bit irregular, but we'll be back on track next uh, weekend. But thanks so much for dropping by, and have a good night. Sweet dreams. While it's heating up, I'm going to get a nice uh, plate for the lobster. You made jam pong. <laughs> I've never made that before. I've had it only a couple of times in restaurants. Somebody told me that it's originally from Beijing and then it got adopted into a Korean version, but it doesn't matter. It's all good. Okay, so I'll put my So it's the rendering heat. of sauce than I thought. So far, there's a, the garlic isn't burning, so I think the heat is pretty good. So I'll just leave it like that. Okay, now I'm going to check on my water morning glory, turn up the heat. Oops. And um, how did you make your jam pong? I'm uh, familiar with the black bean, but um, I actually don't uh, do a lot of cooking with the black bean, but it's great. Like, it's, uh, they're normally fermented. They have that really nice early flavor, which we talked about, that um, fermented flavor. So, um, how did you cook it?
and I'm going to add a touch of um, sugar to this dipping sauce. <laughs> I'm changing my mind. <laughs> And some sesame oil. Thank you so much. I look forward to the recipe and um, I'll give it a try. Spinach is pretty much done. I might have overcooked some of it because I was dealing with a big batch, but it still tastes good. So the brown ones are overcooked. Some of the stalks look brown. But um, I'll just mix it thoroughly because I have a lot. I have a shrimp paste in there and some bean curd paste. So make sure the flavors are infused. So you can see a lot of these stalks. They resemble little straws and that's, I guess they can say the tasty parts, like they're crunchy. The leaves taste good too, but the crunchiness of the stalks um, really gives it a nice uh, texture. Yeah. All right, and I'm gonna leave that open. If I cover it, it'll just continue to cook and it'll be overcooked. And I think we can plate, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, we have our lobster here, so maybe we'll just um, switch it over so you can see the lobster. So just, they're both turned off. Okay. So let you have a look. Well, I hope it's cooked because <laughs> I didn't check. I just trusted that it would be cooked. And I'm actually gonna put the vegetable on a coaster. Should um, I can move that. Oh, I can actually go like that. I put something here. It's really hot though. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to plate. Okay, I know what I'll do. Let's open the lobster and take it one by one to the front. Sure, I can describe the smell. So it smells like seafood. Um, if you're not uh, familiar with the smell of lobster, it kind of smells like shrimp, but not a very, very strong shrimp smell. Just like a light, lighter shrimp smell. Like more mild, kind of like a, a broth. And kind of like chicken. <laughs> Imagine shrimp and chicken. That's sort of the combination of smells that I get. Okay, so we've got coasters here. And I smell garlic because I uh, infused some um, garlic. So there's our lobster. There, it's definitely cooked. The shell has turned pink. We are going to plate this nicely. But it's cooked, and we did it by steaming it. Yeah, my dad actually told me to use cornstarch to seal the flavor, and I forgot that step. So <laughs> I hope it's good. I was supposed to coat them in cornstarch, but I, I missed that. So okay. Oh yeah, so yeah, here's a close-up. And I'll do a close-up of the other one too. Yeah. 
I'm gonna try very hard to assemble it together so they look like three whole lobsters. All right. Okay. So let's switch the camera to the front. Okay, I appreciate that it's really, really late where you are, so I'll try to um, not to take too long so that you can go to bed. <laughs> I forgot to coat them in cornstarch. I guess for my uh, husband who's on the ketone diet, he'll appreciate that they haven't been coated in cornstarch. To move the camera too so that you can, you can see. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to get a bring this over. before. That's my caveat. Oh, the mic. Thank you for the reminder. Okay. So we're good. Got to be careful. When it, when it gets cluttery, that creates a safety hazard. Okay. And I can cinch this over here. All right. So normally the heads are standing up. <laughs> We've got three of them. At a restaurant, my parents normally order two. So this is a treat. There's three lobsters. But you know what? You can, you'll see that there really isn't a lot of meat. That's, uh, that's yeah. That's, it's, it's interesting to see three. It doesn't really, like I, <laughs> yeah, I guess I would have to put them like that. I guess you can't see. You can see it, yeah, on the other camera. Okay. Um, okay, so the bodies. The bodies had the, the claws. The, these aren't claws. These are the legs. So good. Two of the lobsters were missing a claw. So there are... I think there are four claws between three lobsters. Okay. I wonder if you want to see it like this way, like that. Maybe like the head's gonna be looking at you. I don't know. <laughs> the eyes. Okay, like that. Yeah. Guess I just have to make it symmetrical. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna send a text to my husband to tell him to sort of call my parents because uh, they'll want to eat it while it's fresh. say yeah please call parents to make their way over <laughs> there <laughs> okay all right so I got all the 
Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, okay, there's an extra limb. Hmm. Okay. So this three limb one, replace it with this two limb one. Okay. I think we're even now. But nervous. I get this way when I'm doing something for the first time. We have four claws across. Oh, that's perfect. Two on each side. Okay. So the claws are the front appendages, so they go in the front. So. <laughs> I can hear Mr. Cook for fun calling my parents to start making their way over because <laughs> it's nice and hot. Ooh. Okay. Oh, we've got extra claws that were hidden. So, I'm gonna have to pile them. So, it's a little bit tight, the space here, because I think this plate is more suitable for, for um, two lobsters rather than three lobsters. <laughs> Thank you. Now, the rest of the pieces, I'll show you a close up. They're pretty cut up, so I don't know how this is gonna how this is gonna end up. I might just have like a mess of appendages um, over to the sides because we have like we don't have an um, an even amount because uh, yeah <laughs> okay I see tails so the tails have to. So go to the bottom. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. It's hot. <laughs> it's still hot. So you see like the outside, you don't see the body yet. Usually for home cooking, you don't assemble it. You just, you just dig in. <laughs> just dig in. Okay, we've got three tails here. It's pretty much like a fan on the um, end of the plate. It's not, because they're all, they're packed in there tight. Move the head, okay. The body, okay, I'm just gonna randomly start placing and see if I could So instead of doing three bodies side by side, I might make one long extended body. Um, yeah. Like, like I can't tell, I really can't, huh? And some meat is falling out. Oh, I know, okay, I can sort of tell, okay. No, I can't, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just put everything on and And then it'll, I think it will figure itself out as I put it them on. And I'll definitely um, show you a close up. I should somewhat resemble a spine or a back. <laughs> it's not gonna be perfect. Okay, so I need to have like lines going horizontal. Um, three lobsters. <laughs> My dad likes lobster a lot. Yeah. So, and there's this restaurant in the neighborhood that has a lobster special for I think twenty dollars for two lobsters and. He likes to order that. That's a really good price. That's pretty much the price of the lobster raw. And, um, but you have to order over a certain amount um, in order to buy that special. So, yeah, but it's generally an inexpensive restaurant and 
it's a pretty um, modest looking restaurant, um, but it has lobster, so he likes that special. <laughs> Frank and lobster. <laughs> I'll show you closer. It's not bad. It's all like random piece. One of these joints. Just stick them in there. All right, I'll wash my hands and give you a close up. And I'll try a piece. Okay. This is good for lobster broth. I'll, I will also plate the spinach and also. So my fingers actually got quite sticky from the handling lobster. I guess it's similar to handling, like if you were to touch chicken or something, like you'd have some sort of residue on your fingers. I can't really, it's, it sort of makes my fingers like a little bit shrivelly, I guess because there's salt in the, like, yeah. Yeah, like there's something that kind of makes my fingers feel tacky. That's the... <laughs> um, but I take that as a good sign. I take that as like tasty lobster soup <laughs> or lobster essence. Okay, and I'm going to garnish it. So I mentioned that I've seen in restaurants... Um, I've seen like green onion and coriander piled high. I'll just do that. Okay, I can move this more to the center now. I move those plates. I guess I should save some of the coriander, so. So I'm gonna like. <laughs> okay, pile it high. This looks a bit random, more random than I thought. Okay, and I covered the body. I didn't show it to you. Okay, okay, I'll quickly take it off. Then I'll show you and I'll take a picture. And I'll add it back on, okay. I won't do a perfect job at removing all the greens, but just enough so that you can, you can see. And maybe having some green is good to sort of hide um, hide the parts where the lobster was broken. Okay, so here's a close-up. Whoa. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to because it's angled the camera, so it doesn't really it doesn't really show it flat on. Just give it a nice turn carefully. I guess I don't need the cake plate as I do this. So you can see the in the close up, um, you can see. Oh yeah. Some people like it when I do this. Okay. <laughs> that looks like a, a big red mess. <laughs> so we've got the three heads right here. One, two, three. Maybe like that. There, then you've got uh, four claws. So two of the lobsters were missing a claw. So we don't have six claws, we have four claws. We've got like all these appendages, like different legs on either side. I think approximately, I don't know how many they have, 12 on each side. There's a lot of legs. Then we've got our our tail, our, our back, our backs and tails. We have our tail here. This is actually all tail here. Some of the back pieces are connected to legs. And I didn't, um, my dad took the shell off, so I'm putting them at the side. All right, okay, whoops. And my dad already, 
um, cracked the claw with the cleaver so that we don't need a, a separate um, like a nutcracker or something to help us. <laughs> yeah, my family does appreciate and enjoy when I finish my stream to come over with some food. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take a photo. Take a photo of this. Before, then I'm going to add the uh, cilantro and spring onions on top. And it was all preparation. It wasn't that much cooking. I just steamed it. Okay. Then I'm gonna I'm just gonna pile this mix on top. This uh, yeah. It's very random. <laughs> I kind of didn't, I guess I'm going to end up covering the back. It's all right. Okay. Oh, thank you, Stickler. <laughs> A lot happened. You saw that these uh, lobsters were alive. Like you saw that, but there were no sensitive images shown. Just you saw them alive and then you saw them cut up. You didn't see too much of the stuff in between. Yeah. Ooh. Green and red are opposites on the color wheel, so it really stands out, but that's quite a lot. I went to a restaurant where they were able to curl each of these like pieces, the pieces of julian, spring onion, um, and, it looked, and it was piled really, really high. Um, so I should have looked up how to do that technique of curling the spring onion, but uh, maybe we'll do lobster again. <laughs> All right, now for um, the vegetable. Which okay. That. okay, so I'll do vegetable right here. Just have to plate it. I don't do it. <laughs> okay. I'm using a French onion dish, French onion soup dish. I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna get the, I could do the plating. Oh, that, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to do that. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought, I forgot I moved my camera. Okay. We have our green vegetable here. I do have another cake plate to elevate it, but I think I think it's okay. You can see pretty clearly. <laughs> Served with a claw. <laughs> Maybe this is not the nicest claw since it's it's on its own. We've got like these other ones, but this one has this weird burnt red color. I kind of like this really orangey one. Hmm. There's like some guts here or something. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this claw. So here's your appetizer. Some greens with a lobster claw. <laughs> Freezing them is the best way to dispatch. That's the word, dispatch. <laughs> I should learn though. Yeah, but he, he really hacks away and he's so comfortable with it. Like hack, hack, like he, he just knows and he knows how much force to use, how much weight to use. Um, like I don't normally use the cleaver to pound. I'm, I use it like a knife. I, I do a lot of cutting rather than like chopping. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's our 
spinach, uh, our water spinach and, and claw. And we have our dipping sauce, so let me serve that up. A little bit on the overdone side. The uh, green spring onions turned like a darker green, but at least the flavors are infused. And my parents are here. <laughs> and I think you want a little bit of sampling before. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna top this claw with a bit of um, spring. So let me just show you what that looks like in terms of texture. You see the slivered um, ginger. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, minced garlic there and some diced up green onion. Uh, the color is a bit brownish because there's a bit of sesame oil in there, just to enhance the flavor. There's chicken stock powder and some white pepper. Okay, I'm just gonna just um, put like a nice portion in this. Okay, you can't see that, so I'll just move that a bit to the front. This one here, okay. And my mom, she's smiling from the end of the, <laughs> the, the entrance of the kitchen. Okay, so. Okay, I'm just gonna pour it all. Yeah, and. Um, Pretty oily, but whatever we don't use, it's it's great to use as a cooking oil for other dishes. And this is a pretty standard scallion ginger um, dipping sauce that's used for dipping chicken and fish in uh, Asian cuisine. Okay, that's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit much. Okay, I'm gonna just get a... I've got this little sauce plate. It's got a bit of oregano in there. I don't think oregano is gonna give it, is, good, is gonna negatively affect the So I'm going to just serve, serve some up in there. Okay. With a bit of oil. All right, and I'll take a photo. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Great. <laughs> so here's our here's our dinner. <laughs> and let me just give you a, a description of how these foods taste like. So before we do that, let's take our photo. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. And uh, when I say smile, smile because your chat is in the um, photo. Okay. okay. Oh, I should better move this a bit more in so it shows up in the camera. Okay. All right. Say, everyone say lobster. In my close-ups, and then I'm going to sample it for you. Okay, this uh, should cover up. Oops. Okay, morning water, glory. All right. Time to try and thanks for <laughs> saying lobster. Okay, so let's start with the vegetable, a little bit more predictable. So it is like a milder spinach, like, like regular spinach um, is very, very uh, green and has like a stronger, I guess almost like a slight bitter taste to it, but this, uh, uh, morning water glory doesn't have that okay and this was cooked with some olive oil garlic a bit of shrimp paste and um, fermented bean curd we probably could have put a bit of um, 
lobster broth, right? Right into the vegetable to cook it. So that's an idea for next time. Hey. Mm hmm. Hmm. So it's all about texture because there isn't a lot of flavor in the spinach itself, but it's those seasonings that that make it really flavorful. The the garlic, the fermented shrimp paste, like it's it's like a salty, um, earthy taste. Um, you can think of it as sort of like anchovy, kind pretty much very similar to anchovy. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna eat, uh, I'm gonna try um, some lobster claw. <laughs> so I've already got it topped with our scallion ginger sauce and I'm gonna eat that straight. I like the taste of ginger. It doesn't, uh, it's not too strong for me. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I like the seasoning because <laughs> I must have used about three to four tablespoons of garlic when we infuse the oil. And there's about one teaspoon of chicken stock powder. So <laughs> it's got that, it's, it's got that kick to it. Okay. So it's got, it's like, it's almost like having a garlic butter with ginger, very similar to that taste. So you can try that garlic butter, ginger, and add a bit of stock powder. <laughs> Okay, now let's check out this claw. That's right, you can never have too much garlic. Okay, so <laughs> look at that. All right, I, all right, so it did shrink. So somebody asked if lobster meat shrinks, and you can see the size of this uh, claw, and the meat is uh, quite a bit smaller. I guess you need to contrast it against the green um, than the actual claw, so. Um, it's quite small. Okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna, and I can actually peel. You can't normally do this, but because my dad, he, he, he broke them up with the cleaver. Like he, he hacked away at it to, and like never bite your your shell because you could chip your tooth. Yeah, always use um, some sort of a, a seafood cracker. Like some often um, scissors at the on the handle portion. They have a section that you can use to crack it. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cook for Fun wants me to show it. Okay, so let me show it. Yeah. There's these scissors here. That part, you can use that to crack um, your, your claws. It did shrink a lot because seafood is high in water. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so normally you don't peel like this, but because it's already um, cracked, then I hope I can get like meat out of here. I'm not sure if, if meat will come out of this part. Okay, oh. Oh, it did come out. Look at that. So you can see the difference, okay? Uh, the green for contrast. So it's this, um, a thin stick there and then that's the size of the the claw, yeah, so. And apparently, Angry, Angry Papa Pug, one of our viewers said that these shells could be saved for making stock, so I'm actually gonna put that in some sort of a bin and save it. All right, so let's eat this up. All right, I'm just eating with my hands. <laughs> and when you go to a restaurant that serves lobster, you often do eat with your hands. They give you a bib, they give you instructions on how to pull apart the lobster. Normally your lobster isn't, is, is, you're, normally your lobster is cooked and it's whole. It's not even broken apart and they teach you how to twist it. But um, this style of cooking, we already cut it before we cook it and it actually cooks faster that way. All right, so I'm just gonna dig right into it. Uh, more of that uh, scallion ginger sauce. Mm. 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 My parents are becoming impatient. <laughs> They're over here. <laughs> mm. The meat is um 
The claw meat is one of the better parts of the lobster. The claw and the tail. Mm -mm. The meat pieces are chunkier. And you can see the flakes right there. And it's kind of like a cross between shrimp and crab. It's flaky like crab, but it sort of has more of a shrimp taste. But shrimp is sweeter than crab. Um, sorry, shrimp is, yes, shrimp is sweeter than crab and lobster. And it really does taste um, kind of like a shrimp crab. <laughs> But honestly, I don't. Uh, I think, do think lobster is overrated because it's it's pricey compared to crab and shrimp. And I'm pretty happy having shrimp. It's just that this was on special. It was eight ninety nine a pound. Um, it was not bad. It's not bad. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So it's juicy. It's flaky. But this is the claw meat the meat in the legs um so angry papa power other viewers said that that meat is normally used to make mac and cheese it's just for flavor you don't really get much texture you don't get much out of these these little thin guys yeah all right so before we say bye i'll have our mascot say bye to you give my hands a rinse I'm gonna switch the camera over and our friend will say, <laughs> they are, my um, my dad used the motion like, like, like that, like he wanted me to wrap it up, he really did. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Sorry, he didn't like that. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in and i realized that today's stream was at a at an irregular time and for a lot of you here you're in a different you're in a it's late i know a couple of you had to go because it's midnight where you are in uh, europe but um thank you so much though for making the effort to tune in we will be back um, to regular streaming hours, which is Sundays, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. That's the same as New York um, Sunday. And we should stay consistent. It's just had a, yeah, this was a little bit special for dinner and wanted to really show off the lobster, you know, something a little different. And um, I appreciate, uh, yeah, your participation and always being a really nice um, and, um, and really friendly, and um, um, great community. So without further ado, <laughs> my parents and I are going to um, give this a shot. <laughs> yeah. And we shall see you next time. Keep your viewer requests coming. I think we're doing pizza next week. <laughs> and um, we shall see you next time. Take care. Bye. Woof woof. <laughs>